Skinny. Hey, Skinny. Hey, Skinny! Hey, hold your horses, Muggs. I'm coming. Hey, hey! Hey, Danny. Hurry up, you don't get no breakfast. Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. Hey, where do I tie my shoe? <laughs> Let's go, stupid. Don't aggravate yourself, sonny. We gotta wait for Pee Wee. Oh. Hold this. Are you kidding? Will you hurry up, Pee Wee? I'm coming, Mud. You're out. I slipped on a banana. I'm throwing a Hey, what are we waiting for? We've been waiting for you. That's what we've been waiting for. Come on. That's all. Oh, easy. Come on, then. Wake up, Dusty. It's time to go to work. Ah, you. Come on, then. Don't forget, we got to pick up algae. Yeah, I heard you the first time. What? No battery? Come on, boys. How about a little cooperation? Uh, Come on. Get the beat ahead. Let's go. Come on. 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 Nice corny suggestion. What about the laziest guy I know? Sure afraid you're gonna find this airfield. What the bumps, will ya? You almost hit that statue. Yeah, it took you 30 seconds longer than it did yesterday. Can I help it if the wind was against me? Yeah, Denny. Here's your grub. I'll see you at lunchtime. Thanks. Hey, when are you going to break down and go to work for a change? Go to work? Yeah. That's for saps. I never work. I'm retired. Tired saps. Hey, that's the whistle, boys. Come on, don't be late. And don't worry about me, because I'm free as a bird. A bird, huh? You're a cuckoo. Yeah, that's right. You want to give you the back of me hand? Yeah. Go on! <laughs> Go on, you little ants. Get to the plant. That's it. Ants in the plants. Longfellow. Hmm. Better have that fixed. Kind of supposed to turn to the car. I missed you at breakfast. Yes, I rolled over, got an extra 40 winks, but I wasn't late. What is your visit, a personal one or is it business? Well, a little of each. I thought it was awfully nice of you to give the fellows a break, and I thought I'd come in and see how they were coming on. Most satisfactory. It only proved that all they needed was an opportunity. Well, what about this other boy, this, this, uh, oh, suds or bugs or whatever you call him? Oh, you mean Muggs. I'm afraid he's hopeless, Dad. You see, Muggs and work don't get along very well together. But he's an awful nice guy. Uh, maybe it's just as well. I don't want anybody around here who just does their job. This is a business for people with ambition. And a little patriotism wouldn't hurt either. You're having trouble, Ed? No, son. The only thing we have to worry about is sabotage. Flying ambulance. Hmm. What do they think of next? What do they do with this thing? Rescue pigeons? It's a flying ambulance. I can read that, but what's the gag? Who wants to go 5,000 feet up in the air and have the tonsils yanked out? The idea is simple. On numerous occasions, it's vitally necessary to fly a sick or injured person from one city to another. The nearest brain specialist is about 500 miles from here. 
The ordinary plane isn't equipped to get a patient in your condition there safely. What do you mean in my condition? What are you insinuating? Well, all right. Let's take off. I'll have my head examined. Oh, but you haven't a brain concussion. Oh, don't let that worry. I pick up things just like that. Nice layout you got here. Thank you. Have a seat, Mug. Think I will. Besides being able to make a patient comfortable, we're equipped to do minor operations. Uh-huh. Dr. Nagel has spent a young fortune to equip this plane. It has everything. So I notice. Who is this Nagel character? Well, he's one of the most eminent physicians in this city. And a great humanitarian. You don't happen to be in uh, L-O-V-E with him, do you? I admire Dr. Nagel very much, but my heart's up there. Test pilot, huh? One of the best. Well, that lets me out. Understand it, Dad. The foreman personally checked the plane only ten minutes before Tom took her up. It's a clear case of sabotage, and how to combat the situation is beyond me. The plant is well guarded. I have secret servicemen working in every department. It's like fighting an invisible foe in the dark. Hey, lay off, Muggs. What do you want me to do? Starve to death? I'm practically a skeleton now. Go on, somebody else. Take it easy, Muggs. I'm taking it easy. Hey, why don't you bring your own lunch? That's the trouble, you fellas. Don't I share everything I got with you? Gary, you never got anything. I share it, don't I? Ah. <coughs> yeah, you better take it back before you get nervous indigestion. Hey, you double crosser. <laughs> what, no potatoes? Oh, brother. Hello, Muggs. Hi, Algie. My father asked me to thank you for what and suggested that if you should decide to go to work... Oh, I... don't miss word while I'm eating. How's that guy, that pilot, uh, Tom Lawson? Oh, he's all right. He ought to be out of the hospital a day or two. It's a case of sabotage. Sabotage? I like mine with mustard. Oh, it's not funny, Muggs. Burning factories and planes, endangering lives. Wake of foreigners, huh? Well, that's the peculiar part of an American activity, Danny. The most vicious offenders are often born in America and just don't realize what they're doing. Gee. I got the solution. Well, if they like the country they're working for so much, why not send them back there? How are you going to catch a bunch of rats like that? Say, maybe we could catch them with a piece of cheese. Well, seriously, Muggs. Uh, are you sure you don't want to speak to my father? Told you, son, I don't want to work. Besides, I'm going into humanitarian business. Humanitarian? I heard of vegetarians. They only eat vegetables. But well, humanitarian? You mean you eat... You see, it's more with his mentality he wants to work. Us humanitarians, we use our noodles. You see that? Come on over, I'll explain something to you. Well, here she is. Okay, so it's an airplane. So what? And an ambulance, too. Well, what's this got to do with what we was talking about? Well, you see, the idea is very simple. On numerous occasions, it is essential to move sick people from one city to another in a hurry. Now, suppose you had a brainstorm. You know, if I didn't know you was crazy, well, you'd have me crazy, too. Ignorant. Now, you see, these specialists sometimes live as much as 500 miles apart. There's nothing in between except maybe a horse doctor. So I says to myself, something must be done for these poor, gullible invalids. You, uh, feel all right, don't you? Sure is a nice gadget. Uh, is it, uh, yours? What do you think? Come on, look it over. Let's see this. I'll take it all in, boys. 
Boy, is this something. Man, this is a killer. I'd never have sunk it. Say, you must have gone to a great deal of expense to with this plane, Muggs. Oh, yeah, it cost a couple of bucks. Besides being able to make patients very comfortable, we're also equipped to do minor operations. Hey, Skinny. What? Put that down. You want to be fumigated? I'd never have thunk it. Why didn't you tell me about this gadget? Well, I want to keep it for a little surprise. But I'm cutting you in. From now on, you and me is just a couple of humanitarians. Thanks, Muggs. Hey, we're going to need a pilot and a sawbones, aren't we? I took care of that this morning. I went out and signed up a very famous physician. And besides that, he's pretty eminent. Oh, new kind of a gas mask. Dad? Well, I'll tell you, that's a scrap the satometer. Huh? Thermometer. Oh. Hey, how do you get a thermometer like this in your mouth? Oh, it's for testing blood pressure. You see, you wrap this around your arm, press the bulb a few times, that tightens it. Then you simply look at the recorder and you can find out what the blood pressure is. Just like I thought. You'll never learn nothing. Roger, I'm very anxious to see your flying ambulance. Well, there's, there's nothing so very wonderful about it, Forbes, but I think it will serve its purpose. This way, gentlemen. Hey, look, a muffler. Yeah, it's nice and warm, soft. Hey, look at Skinny. He's hanging himself sitting down. Hey, you sad, you're supposed to put that on your arm. Anybody knows that. <coughs> Gee, thanks for saving my neck. We wasn't worried about your neck. We was worried about the machine. Looks very interesting, Doctor. Thank you. Well, what can I do for you guys? Why, we'd like to inspect this plane. Got a pass? I am Dr. Richard Nagel III. Now listen, I wouldn't care if you was Henry VIII. Besides, you're a little too late anyway. We already got a doctor. Any references you'd like to give to me, though, well, uh, if we get rushed, I'd be glad to give you a buzz. Don't you understand? I'm Dr. Nagel, owner of this plane. Oh. What? Well, I think I can explain, Doctor. You're young Reynolds, aren't you? Yes, I met you in my father's office. Might I ask what you and this person are doing in my ship? Uh, we just came to look it over with a couple of friends of ours. Then I'll have to ask you and your friends to get out and stay out. Muggs? I'm busy. Hey, Muggs! Dr. Nagel's here, Muggs. Ah, uh, just tell it. Dr. Nagel! Hey, fellas, beat it! Hi, Doc. No rough stuff now, understand? Do you want to see me? You have absolutely no business on my property. And if ever I find you here again, I... Uh, I'll have you arrested. Right, all right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Wouldn't fit me anyway. Should I slug him one, Muggs? Spoil that manicure? I'll be silly. <laughs> Come on, we gotta go to work anyway. Hey, Squirlo! Uh, Come, gentlemen, I, I, I'll show you the front of the ship. Hey, fellas, look at Scruno. Must be something he ate. Hold on. You want to see me, Mr. Reynolds? Come in, Danny. Yes, sir. Hi, Algy. Hello, Danny. Sit down. Yes, sir. Danny, I want you to know that you've made good. You worked hard, conscientiously, and I have every reason to believe that you can be trusted. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. 
My well, works is search work. The foreman tells me what he wants done, and I do it. And while I don't want to seem, well, melodramatic, uh, certain factions have been successful in learning all about them. Why, we must have spies right in the plant. The profession of a spy has lost its dignity and glamour. Today, they're just ordinary common thieves, gangsters. I wish there was something I could do about it. There is. And as you boys might say, I'll give you the lowdown. Yes, sir. Plans have been stolen and flown to the border. In this envelope are supposed to be blueprints for a new bomb site. Now, through certain sources, Danny, it'll be made known that you're going to deliver this to our downtown office. And I have every reason to believe that someone will try to get them. There they are. I get the gag, Mr. Reynolds. I take these and let somebody swipe them from me, and I find out who does the swiping. Precisely. And I want you to know, Danny, that there will be a certain amount of danger attached to this assignment, too. Where do I take them? The address is on the envelope. And please be careful. Yes, sir. I will. Good luck, Danny. Thanks, Algie. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. Good luck. Goodbye. Uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. Oh. Hiya, Mugs. Howdy, Patty Canty, huh? No, I got a temporary promotion. I'm kind of a detective now. You mean defective, don't you? Stop your clowning. I'm up to my ears in mystery. Huh. You know, spies ain't what they used to be. They lost all their glamour and uh, uh, dignitaries. Well, don't let that worry. Your conditions are bad all over. I gotta get robbed any minute now. It's kind of dangerous, too. Well, see you later. Hey, wait a minute. What's cooking? Not much. Well, maybe I'd better go with you. Those babies are plenty tough, you know. I can take care of myself. There's your ambulance. That's the first time I was ever cut in on a deal and cut out before I was even cut in. Could I help it if I got hallucinations? If you boys don't get off this ship, I'm gonna have you thrown into jail. I have no imagination, that's all. Wish I had him here now. I'd take him by the neck and break it off at the ankles. Uh, he must be gone by now anyway. Be a very easy matter for us to send whatever plans and messages we choose. Since we seem to be in a complimentary mood, Forbes, I must say you did an excellent job on that pursuit plan. It will take them several months to replace that model, Doctor. I have only one suggestion. In the future, I think you might do a much better job in being sure to fix the safety belt. Huh? No one will be suspicious of us when we have a patient to take to the border. Once there, no questions will be asked. Gentlemen, it's a perfect arrangement. Well, now what? I wouldn't be a bit surprised Nago was mixed up in his stolen plan stuff. Been using your imagination again, huh? I don't know. I heard him talking about flying to the border or something. And Reynolds said that... Uh, you're just trying to pin something on him because you don't like the guy. Leave me alone, will you? I gotta get held up. You can't be wrong all the time. You ever hear the law of averages? He works for Reynolds. How could you lose track of him? Get me the police department. If anything's happened to Danny, I'll never forgive myself. He was such a, a terrible mess. Hello, police department. This is a blueprint of a ship that was manufactured eight years ago. Where did you get this information? From the same source. If you job, it suggests that you get your information elsewhere. And the last item on your evening news broadcast is the mysterious disappearance of Danny Graham, an employee of the Reynolds Aviation Company. When I asked... Asser... I can't understand what happened. Well, could Danny just disappear? He must be someplace. Pardon me, Mrs. Graham, but... We checked at all the hospitals, and the police haven't a report of any accident. He'll show. Sure he will, Mrs. Graham. Danny can take care of himself. Oh, Danny should be proud to have such pals as you boys. If I only knew he was safe. Yes, this is Mrs. Graham. No, I haven't any news. What? Muggs is missing, too? He left the car. Oh, yeah. Did you report it to the police? 
I wish I could say something to cheer you up. I don't know what to do. I'm so worried. What could have happened to them? We're going to go take a look around, Mrs. Graham, see if we can find Danny. Just a moment. If you hear any news, let me know right away, please. Sure, we will. Come on, fellas. Yes? Well, the boys are just leaving right now. They're going to look for them. I've looked every place. Me too, but I don't know where they could be. Well, man, I think we were in our time, Skinny. I didn't look everywhere. We might as well keep on looking. We can't go back and face Mrs. Graham. No, you sure can. And just to think, I wouldn't give him any of my lunch. Man, I'll never get to look in Muggs' eyes when I didn't have no potato. Don't do that, man. Stop. Hey, what's eating you? Just look. Hey, it's Muggs. How can you tell? He's wearing my shoes. Hey, look at one of those other barrels. Maybe Danny's in there. Easy, Ma. That hurts. Please, Danny. Now to lose your hair and eat easy lessons. I was so worried about you, Muggy. I'm even glad to see you in Ow. any condition. Oh, who's winning, Ma? What is it, a tug of war? Hey, I got an idea, Mrs. Graham. Why don't you cut his hair off? Get lost, will ya? I'll go. It's Mr. Reynolds. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi. You'll, you'll pardon the intrusion, ladies, but I was anxious to learn the result of what happened. But won't you sit down? Uh, thank you, no. I'll only be here a moment. What's that? I'm getting a permanent. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Danny. I should never have exposed you to such danger. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, forget it, boss. What's a little clunk on the head? Don't be so modest. I got clunk, too, and I wasn't even playing. Oh, that must be Bugs. Bugs, Dad. Oh, that's right. Mugs. How are you, Mugs? Hi, Reynolds. Tell me, Danny, did you have the opportunity to see what they look like? No, I didn't. They snuck up behind us, and next thing I remember, I was upside down in a barrel. You didn't have a chance to see them, eh? No. You're supposed to be a pretty smart guy, ain't you, Reynolds? Don't start any trouble, Muggs. You've been getting pretty aggravated because some slugs have been stealing some blueprints from you, haven't you? Oh, uh, well, yes. Well, just supposing maybe somebody spent a lot of money so they could just build a plane to go back and forth to the border. Would that be incriminating? Well, it might be. Uh-huh. Hey, you mean the doc? Yeah, yeah, I mean the doc. And it ain't just because he kicked me off his ship, either. He means Dr. Nagel, Dad. Oh, oh. I guess we'd better be going. So, Matt, ain't you interested? Uh, no, Muggs. I'm afraid you base your suspicions on wishful thinking. I happen to know Dr. Nagel, and I'm very familiar with the irreproachable reputation that he enjoys. Those are just the ones to look out for. Those irreproachable guys. I'm afraid, Muggs, you have too much leisure. We'd better be going, Algy. I'm very happy the boys are unharmed. Good night, ladies. Good night, Mr. Reynolds. Hey, what's the idea of talking to Mr. Reynolds like that? Ain't you got no manners? I didn't say nothing to him. Listen, you call up that Nagel guy, see, and you make an appointment with him for tomorrow morning. Call up the doc? What for? Because you're gonna be a very sick boy. Am I? What am I supposed to have? Did you ever have your appendix out? He ain't gonna carve me up. Oh, well, we'll think of something. That's what I was afraid of. Let go, I'm coming. Hi. Hello. We got an appointment with the doc. I'm so glad to see you. I haven't had a chance to thank you for saving Tom. Hey, that was nothing. I do little things like that. But you see, the reason we come up here was about Danny. He ain't feeling so good. Oh, what's wrong with Danny? Well, he's got a couple of symptoms. Symptoms? Symptoms of what? Well, uh, just symptoms, you know. Uh, colic, I think it is. Yeah, it's settling my left foot. You gonna take my uh, pulse? Please be seated a moment. Sit down. Pardon me, lady. Pardon me, lady. Pardon me. 
Yes, Miss Munson. You have an appointment with Danny Graham. Sorry, but I neglected to put it in your book. All right, Miss Munson, I'll tell you. Danny Graham. Anything wrong, Doctor? No, I don't think so. I wonder where I heard that name before. Danny Graham. Well, isn't that the lad we borrowed the blueprint from? Yes, I, I think you're right. I wonder what he wants. You gentlemen will excuse me. Certainly. Miss Munson, I'll see this Danny Graham now. You may go in now. Swell. Hey, you going this way. Lay off me, I'm sick. Lay off. You wanted to see me? Yeah. Sit down, please. Yeah. By the way, weren't you among the boys who inspected my plane yesterday? Yeah, yeah, that's us. Well, I'm sorry if I appeared a bit irritable at the time, but I... I was with two very important gentlemen and, uh... Well, I was a bit surprised to... You mean you ain't sore? Of course not. And it won't bother you if we look your ship over again? On the contrary, I... I very much appreciate your interest in my enterprise. Which one of you is Danny Graham? I am. What seems to be the trouble, Danny? He has, uh, he has a little colic. Yeah, that's right, I got the colic. It, uh, settled in my life. That's too bad, Danny. But I think I can give you something to relieve that. Sit down, what are you scared of? Listen, but I ain't hungry. Now it's all gone, Doc. I, I don't think I'm gonna need any of that stuff. Well, we'll just give you a little to make sure. Open up. That's awful. What are you scared of? What are you scared of? That won't hurt you. It's good for you. It relaxes you. See that? It's great. Okay. I still don't like it. That was very nice of you, Doc. Can we pay you with a cashier? Oh, there'll be no charge, boys. I'm very happy to have an opportunity to make up for being so rude to you yesterday. Hey, you're not such a bad guy after all, Doc. Now, do you operate? Upon occasion, yes. Well, that's swell. I'll send you over a nice knife sharpener. Come on. That one was on the house. Be seeing you. Nothing to be alarmed about, gentlemen. Just a couple of fresh kids. <laughs> I don't think they'll pay me another visit. Not for a little while, at least. No, I think I had that guy pegged all wrong. Sure, just because he kicks us off his plane, you think he's a spy. Well, that's where my institution works, you know, that's the way I think. I can't do nothing about that. Boy, he sure fell for that collar gag, didn't he? Ha, <laughs> what a chum. Don't kid yourself, he's pretty smart. You gotta be the car people up and put him back together again. Getting hot, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, guess the humility is getting a little low, ain't it? Either that or it's the heat. Yeah, yeah, I guess it must be the heat. Hey, hey, wait for me! Tell me the colic was just a plain old stomach ache. That guy's got to be wrong sometimes. Sure, but you take advantage of it. Uh, see you at lunchtime, pal. You'll have to find me first. Uh, 
I just got to remember to have that thing fixed. What, are you getting seclusive? What do you mean, seclusive? I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, you've been looking for me. I haven't seen you since I dragged you off the car. That ain't my fault. You want to hide? If you don't want to see me, don't hide. What are you getting tough about? I ain't getting tough, that's all. Well, don't, don't be... start something you can't finish. I ain't starting nothing I can't finish. Don't worry about me. What, what, what do you want to beef about? Huh? What, what's your argument? What do you get so hot-tempered about? What I'm not hot-tempered. Don't push good. me. All I said was, where Stop did you hide? Off. Look out! That's what you would not have. Muggs! Danny! Help! Hey, what's the matter with you? What happened? Grab that end of the wing. Hmm. How's Pee-wee, Mr. Reynolds? The boy is injured internally. Needs an immediate operation. I know a specialist up north who can do it. Can we fly him there, Dad? We haven't a plane available with a berth. He'd never make it. What about the flying ambulance? If we can get Dr. Nagel's permission, yes. We'll get it. You fellas get Pee-wee in that plane. We'll get the permission. Come on, Danny. Is the doc in? Yes, but he's busy. Listen, him, wait. Hey, Doc, we want to use your flying ambulance. Would you mind waiting outside? A pal of us was hurt. He was hurt bad. Yeah, if we don't get him to the specialist today, why, he's liable to croak. I'm terribly sorry, and I appreciate your position, but I've made other plans for the ambulance. Good luck, Doc. He's a friend of ours, and he got hurt trying to save us. You can't let a guy like that down. Isn't that what you built that thing for, to fly sick people back and forth? All right, all right, take him out to the plane. He's there already. Yeah, thanks, Doc. You're a small guy. And I thought he was a spy. Mm. Oh, I'm glad you could make it, Tom. Everything happened so quickly, Dr. Nagel couldn't locate his regular pilot. The lad's a friend of Muggs. That's enough for me. You are ready to shove off? Yes. How is he? About the same. We're going with you. to keep you company. Hello, fellas. You're gonna beat this rat kid. You just got it. Who's the toughest kid you know, Danny? Pee-wee is. Sure, that's right. You ain't gonna fall back on a reputation like that, are you? I'm fighting. Can we come in? Yes, but you can only stay a moment. Better than could be expected, Mars. I brought you some flowers. Yeah, and I brought you some candy. Mm -hmm. Who's the toughest guy you know? You are, Pee Wee. You certainly, certainly there's no doubt about that. Nothing can put you down, pal. You'd better rest now. I'm certain Pee-wee is out of danger. We can fly home in the morning. That's well. Are you sure he'll be all right? Yes, and he'll have the best of care. Now, if you'll excuse me. Where else can we go? Hey, give him a little kiss for me, will you? You know, love's a funny thing. I thought I was in love once. Yeah? Yeah. She was a waitress. Boy, how she could flip hot cakes. Sometimes throw them 10 feet and me touch them. Was they buckwheat cakes? What difference does it make? Yeah, they're just harder to flip. They squish them. You, you ain't got no sediment, no, no romance. I ain't, huh? Listen, Sonny, I've had my day. I went out with a girl there once. She was a little manicure. Used to hang out in Benny's ice cream parlor. You mean Maisie? Yeah, Maisie, that was the girl. They thought she was Benny's girl. She was. Some kiss. Hey, Lloyd, get away from that crowd. Hey, look. What's that? It's a piece of blueprint they make planes from. It is? Hey, what would this be doing here? Unless if they were flying planes to the border. Maybe you've got something there. I always did suspect that Nagel going around giving people a fish eye. Let's play this thing smart. Go out and get that girl. And how? Oh. Hmm. What is this a 
Sonny's doing to get a customer. Where'd you go? I, I believe it was near the border. Don't you know for sure? I didn't ask where we were going, but the name on the airport was San Casanta. What'd you get down there for? We were flying one of Dr. Nagel's patients home. Why are you asking all these questions? I don't know, but there's one thing we've got to find out. Did anybody meet the patient at the airport? Of course. An ambulance from the San Casanta Hospital. You ever see that before? Never mind. San Casanta Hospital, huh? Then you sent the hospital. He said he thought you were a spy. Is that it, Doctor? Yes. Well, this boy had suspicions that you were engaged in certain activities. He still has them, regardless of what he may think of you personally. This bad weather, he'd have to come in on a beam. I've spent a great deal of time and money in the flying ambulance. Gentlemen, we have no alternative. Do you really think this girl is mixed up in it? I'm the only one that's mixed up right now. I'm going to work on this thing until I straighten it out. You work? This is definitely working for the government. You use your brains, not your hands. What brains? Hey, we're running under the clouds. They ain't got no silver linings either. So the uh, boys put you through the third degree, eh? At least the third. It's getting kind of thick, huh? I think we'd better go in on the beam. WPMF. Nagel ambulance plane coming in on the beam. Nagel, ambulance plane calling Airport 6. Nagel, ambulance plane calling Airport 6 and coming in on the beam. Coming in on the beam. I can't see nothing but nothing. I think we're losing altitude. Maybe we're going to land. Nagel plane calling Airport 6. Come in, please. Come in, please. Nagel plane calling Airport 6. Come in, please. Come in, Airport 6. Come in, please. Come on, you better go into the cabin. What's the matter, Tom? Something's going wrong with the beam. I'm going to try to make that opening and set her down. I think I see where he's going. Don't get excited, boys. Tom's going to try to set her down. Set her down? This is where I came in. This is where I get out. Just stay seated, boys, please. Hold tight. Will he be all right? When's he coming on? The chat of Pee Wee's all right. We got something else to worry about. Gee, I'm glad you made it, fellas. What's he knew? Well, the man in the observation tower was found bound and gagged. He had to fly in without the beam. So what? Maybe somebody's trying to bump us off. Bump you off? Why, man, that's murder. Come on, fellas. We better go into a huddle. Come on. Tom Lawson is the most competent aviator. There's every man who could bring in a ship the way he did. You see those two boys in the middle of the crowd? The one who's doing all the talking and the one next to him? Yes. They're the ones who are in my office. The shorter one of the two is the one who made that remark. If you haven't any objections, Doctor, I'd like to make a suggestion. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. The doctor's flying stolen plants. It's as simple as two and two. That makes five, don't it? This ain't no lesson in algebra. Gee, fellas, maybe we ought to call the cops. Look, why not take my father into our confidence? He undoubtedly would have suggestions. Probably know what to do in a case like this. We don't need your father, I'm telling you. I got the thing all figured out. Maybe Algie's right, you know. We could tell us, old man. Nothing doing. I'm going to show that guy I can do something with my leisure. You ought to do something with it. So you know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that doctor was a sabotager, too. I wouldn't be a bit surprised myself. Just suppose he was standing over there. You know what I do? I take his clock and I can't. Your aim is atrocious. Thanks. He means bad. Uh, let me take a crack at that guy and knock his brains out. Oh, that ain't so good either. You hold that. That's bad. That's bad. Get off of this pump, will you? Get off of this pump. 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 Hey, look. Who was that? Hey, there goes the fifth column. Grab him. Grab him out of there. I'm going this way. Hey, Danny, you take 
algae and go around a block that way. Hurry up. Right, come on, fellas. Did you see him? No. Hey, hey, which way did he go? I don't know, but I think he went that way. He went that way, huh? I'm going this way. We'll be right back. Come on, fellas. Just made a little mistake. That fit column fella sure disappeared quick. But I think I know where I can get a line on Nagel anyway. Well, we could go up to his office and ask him if he's a spy. It's that clowning, if that's what you're doing. No, I'd like to talk to Helen. Well, it strikes me that if Dr. Nagel is the man we're looking for, then the girl is probably in cahoots with him. Yeah. Oh, no, no, she's not. Don't forget, he tried to kill her, too. And I'd like to get her phone number. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. I imagine you could get her through the nurse's exchange. That's right. Why didn't I think of that before? Who's got a slug? Would a nickel do? Hello, Helen? Yeah, well, this is Muggs. Muggs, you know, a friend of Pee Wee's. What's cooking? She's eating out. Yeah, well, look, uh, we're working on a little case, a little mystery. It's about espionage. Yeah, you know, about spies and stuff. Well, we thought maybe you could help us out. Yeah, well, we're down in uh, Benny's ice cream parlor. Yeah, we want you to come down here about 15 minutes. Yeah, what do you mean, is it a nice place? We patronize it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Was she home? Nope. Line's busy. We wouldn't have called you here unless we thought you were on the level. It's incredible. Well, I've been with Dr. Nagel almost a year, and he hasn't shown the slightest evidence of being anything but a good citizen, and as I told you before, a most competent doctor. You remember us asking you about the uh, San Casano Hospital? Yes. Well, well we called there. Long distance. We heard charges. And there ain't no such place. What? Of course, there's a possibility that imagination is playing a great part in all this. However, the boys still feel that Dr. Nagel is using his ambulance plane to fly secret plans to agents near the border. Well, what do you want me to do? Is he flying any more patients? Yes, a man at 8 in the morning. Uh, where's he picking them up at? 1488 Orchard. Do you know him? Oh, yes. Mr. Forbes has been in the office many times. The doctor is sending him home, and he's calling on him at 7 in the morning to put on fresh bandages. How big is this uh, Mr. Forbes? Stand up. Well, it's about your size. Hey, I don't have to get sick again, do I? Well, we've got to find out where he's flying, these guys. What'd you say that number was? 1488 Orchard. Come on. Why don't we think of some other way? I did enough thinking for one night. Hi, sweetie pie. Hi, Maisie. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm a little busy right now. Oh, Benny won't be back for an hour. Well, just tell him I couldn't wait, will you? Well, this is it. Come on, let's go around the back. Well, Forbes, I guess we might just as well get it over with. Certainly, Doctor. bandages on somebody's head. That must be Mr. Forbes.
Jack. Call me, Doc? Yes. Hello, no one but the ambulance drivers in here. I know that. Lie down. Happy landing, Forbes. Thank you, Doctor. Hey, the doc's gone. There's some other guy in there. Well, come on, let's get in the Blitz Creek. <laughs> look here, look, look. Be careful with that. I'm allergic. I hope you don't get air sick. doing here? One peep out of you and I'll knock you for a home run. You got any rope around here? I, I think you'll find some in the closet. Stay there. Take out that toy man. Come on, take it off before I knock you out from under it. That's hey, it. look, plants. Is there something about a bomb site? Boy, oh boy. Dr. Nagel will kill me for this. Don't worry about it. You'll get a nice funeral. Hey, now I won't have to get sick, huh? Who's at the receiving end of this? I haven't the slightest idea. Take these plants and put them back in that and put them on your head. Well, I'll pick them up as in with Nagel. Yeah, but who's going to pick me up? Sit down here. Sit back there. We're going to knit you a nice sweater. I don't think I got enough rope. Where's Jack? Jack, get down. Let's go. Your lunch set up. Okay. All set. Now all I gotta do is get on that plane. All set, George. Isn't Tom at the controls? Yeah, I'm a regular pilot. Still, I don't tie you. Wasn't my fault. The whole gang jumped on me. There must have been a dozen of them. I couldn't help it. Neither could I. Well, they held me up with a gun that long. <clears throat> Contact the ship and tell George to turn back. I'm afraid you're in for trouble, Danny. You're afraid? <laughs> I'm scared stiff. They'd still rather hit you right on an ice truck. A wireless on this plane? Radio phone. Just in case the doc tries to tip off that pilot. What's he gonna do? He's crazy! Calling Nagel Ambulance Plane. WPMF, come in please. WPMF, Nagel Ambulance Plane, back to the station calling. Come in please. WPMF, Nagel Ambulance Plane, back to the station calling. Come in please. time. George? George, come in, George. George, come in, please. This is Dr. Nagel. Come in, come in. You're a lucky fella. You'll never know what hit you. Well, that pilot won't be getting any tip-offs for a while. That's fine. Who's going to run the plane? Who cares who's going to run the... The plane! Who's going to run... Of all the stupid things I ever heard of, 
Ambulance plane, come in, please. It's on the blink, Doc. I can't get it. Oh, well, contact San Cazenta. It's from Dr. Nagel. It's trouble, sir. The patient your ambulance is meeting is not Forbes, but treat the matter as though nothing had happened. You understand. Hi, Tom. Hi, fellas. Helen tried to get in touch with her before she left. What do you mean left? Hey, Nagel's a spy. Yeah, they're flying government plans. Mother and Nagel's around the fifth column. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, boys. Uh, let me get this straight. What are you trying to tell well, me? Well, I think I can explain, Tom. You, you see, Nagel is using his ambulance plane to fly secret plans to agents near the border. Now, Danny substituted himself as a doctor's fake patient, and Muggs went with him. By doing all this, we hope to find out who's working with the doctor. And Helen went along? Yeah, she insisted. Oh, don't worry, Tom. Everything will work out all right. Did they fly south? Yes, but I don't know exactly where. Well, it's a chance in a hundred, but I'm heading for the border. Flight company? Yeah, come on. to get the plans. After that, we can take whatever measures are deemed necessary. Naturally, we'll have to abandon this place as soon as possible. Hey, they're coming down the road now. All right, you boys better wait in the other room. Up.
in the ambulance with the boy. Okay, place him there on the couch. Then go back to the field and bring the nurse here. I trust you're feeling all right after your trip. Yeah. But they went down that road. There's the ambulance now. I'll replace these bandages with fresh ones. Of course, you realize there is no return trip for you. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to have any trouble with you. We're taking you back. If you are. What do you mean by we? The matter with you, don't you understand American? He said we. All right, give me those plans. Hand them over. Grab that chair. Hey, is that gun really loaded? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a little different. Well, you want to play, eh? Hey, don't do that. My face is delicate. What's the matter with you, Get him out of here. We was only kidding about this oh, whole thing now. Maybe we ought to talk it over a little, huh? Yeah, listen, if we only had time, have it. Tom? Yes, dear. Some fun, eh? Yeah, man, some fun. Ah. You know, I think I'm gonna like working for you, Mr. Reynolds. I think you're gonna like having me work for you. Yes, I think I will, Slug. I need mugs. <laughs> Well, you could have knocked me over with the steamroller when I heard that Muggs is actually going to work. I never had thunk it. I didn't either, but I was there when he told Daddy he'd take the job and to prove it, he's driving him to work this morning. Some class to Muggs, huh? Yeah. Hey, fellas, here he comes now. Look. Sabotage. Why? Why, you're saying. I quit. 